everyone. I am junior TV anchor Kairavi Chauhan. Thank you for joining me on Kids Bite TV for kids and by kids. Guess what? I just got done with my 10 standard board exams. I think I did pretty well. Now, while I'm eagerly waiting for the results, I'm also trying my hands at different fun things. Catching up with friends, reading books which I had kept aside for a long time, and yes, also participating in some cool competitions to upskill myself. HPE Code Wars 2023 Code Battle is undoubtedly India's ultimate coding competition of the year, brought to you by Hewlett Packard Enterprise in partnership with Codingal. This is one awesome competition that I'm surely going to participate in. To tell you more, we have with us Vivek Prakash Sir, the co-founder and CEO at Codingal. Codingal teaches young students one of the most important 21st century skills, which is coding. The name Codingal says it all, doesn't it? Welcome to Kids by TV, sir. Thank you for joining us today for this exclusive interview. Thank you so much, Karavi. Thanks for inviting me here. It's my pleasure to be here uh, and interact with you and tell tell more about HP Code Wars, about coding, all about me. So feel free to ask anything. So, sir, teaching coding to kids is a huge responsibility. What really inspired you to start coding? In? Um, the journey goes back. Uh, it's a great question, and the journey goes back. I would say. 10 to 15 years ago, um, I, you, you mentioned that you just completed your 10th board exam. I give, gave my 10th board exam in 2006 and it was 17 years ago. It seems like a really, really long time. Um, and around that time between 2006 to 2010, uh, is when the world of technology that we live in uh, started coming into our lives faster than anybody ever expected. So 2008 is when I gave my 12th board exam two years later. And the same year I went to IIT Roorkee to study computer science. Uh, it was a five year dual degree program where I did both my bachelor's and master's in computer science from 2008 to 2013. And very luckily chose to study computer science even though I had not studied about computers at all during the school days. There was just nobody was really talking about technology and computers at that time when I was in school. But everything changed extremely rapidly and very, very fast, specifically between 2008 to 2013 when I was studying computer science at IIT Roorkee. Google Maps did not exist 15 years ago. You know? Uh, you could not use a, there was no smartphone back then. Many things that we take for granted today when it comes to technology, even having this video con um, conference and having, having this interview, it was just not possible 15, 20 years ago. And it is people like us who created all this technology. It accelerated the progress of the mankind. It accelerated the speed at which we can do. It, it made things like going from place A to place B much easier. Don't have to depend on anyone else. Don't have to get lost. You know, we can use Google Maps. And that's just an example. Right? Um, and that started or made me think that technology is something again, which is so new to all of us, even though we are using it every day, very few of us really understand it very well. And that led me to first start and build a company called as Hacker Earth, where we build world's largest platform for college students to learn programming online and get jobs. And while building Hacker Earth, then I again realized that I need to go a level deeper. We have to start it from a school and inspire school kids to start learning computer science in a very fun and engaging way from a very young age, so that it doesn't matter whether you know, you grow up or anybody who is learning coding at the school, they grow up and they have to necessarily become software engineers or programmers. But just by learning coding, just like we study biology and math and history and geography and physics to get a better understanding of the world around us, 
by learning coding we get a better understanding of the world of technology that we live in how to avoid scams how to avoid frauds you know like uh, and if someone has better ideas how to become the next bill gates and mark zuckerberg and change the world and change the future and and that mission to inspire kids and teens to fall in love with coding is what motivated me to start building coding up so true sir coding is surely an important skill for all of us to learn if even if i take my example i have completed learning java and i am learning python for some students the thought of learning to code might be boring or some may think it's quite difficult to grasp so how do you ensure coding is fun for all yes that's a great question um and learning coding if not taught the right way and i think the same applies to anything else that we study in school if we do not have the best teacher uh who is teaching teaching that subject in the best possible way and invoking that curiosity in us right? then even the best of the subjects can be very boring and even the subjects which we psychologically feel or the perception that we have like geography and all of that are boring the best of the teachers can make it very interesting okay? and that is what what at least i experienced in the school fortunately I had great teachers uh, across all the subjects um, and i really enjoyed you know studying everything the same applies to coding the it has to be very practical it cannot be theoretical coding is not something we sit down probably in a classroom and we are writing taking notes on pen and paper and we are just remembering what are files and bits and bytes and hardware it is something that has to be done on a computer it is something where while learning we are doing it and the best thing about coding is as you would have already seen that when you write a program and the program runs you feel great joy about it so there is actually a instant gratification while doing coding just like playing video games again if coding is taught the right way if coding is not taught the right way it can be the most boring subject and nobody ever wants to study it and while building coding again our goal has been to make it as practical as possible you know to uh, the activities that kids and teens do while learning coding should be about having a specific outcome like you build an app and you you know uh, deploy it publish it on play store and tell all your friends about it you build a game and you are able to play the game yourself and share it, share it with all the friends and when that happens the experience becomes really amazing and that is what we have been doing at coding so true coding can be so fun when taught from the right hands yes while some students learning at codingal would have prior coding experience there would also be students who are complete beginners how do you handhold in so that no one is left behind yeah absolutely that's again something we have and i personally have thought a lot about coding is again not one like those subjects where we have a very defined curriculum for every or a defined chapters and you know lessons for every grade or for every class right okay, okay if you are in class 7 this is what you have to study in science and if you are in class 8 this is what you have to study in science coding is not like that and it is not meant to be studied like that also so what we do is while we have created based on a very standardized k12 computer science framework which is widely adopted in the us school system we have taken that framework to build a age appropriate and class appropriate coding curriculum for if for students of all grades at the same time what we have done is uh, we do a lot of personalization and customization depending on what a student wants to study or or what a student is even probably has the capability to study depending on the depending on how much they already know about coding and we use a little bit of machine learning we use ai and we customize the curriculum uh to ensure that you start from where you you are supposed to start like for example someone could be in you know class 8 and has never done any kind of coding before for them the learning path has to be same as someone probably who is in class 1 or class 2 and that's the best thing about coding it doesn't matter whichever age whichever grade you start at you can actually catch up very very quickly again if the curriculum is built the right way and we have invested in a lot of engineering and technology to ensure that you start from the right place that's so great to know 
Bodengal is known for organizing large scale national and global coding competitions and hackathons. Participating in them obviously helps us to test our knowledge. Can you share some insights in some of your major competitions and how they are unique? Yes, absolutely. So, um, if you see, uh, there have been these Olympiads like Math Olympiads, Science Olympiads, which are competitions that all of us have, you know, grown up, you know, and participating in them. When I was in school, participate I, I participated in many of such Olympiads. Technology is again has been something so new for all of us. You know, the example that I gave when I was in college, and it was not a long time ago. If you just think about it, like ten years ago, first time we like we bought a smartphone the first time we actually experienced google maps first time we installed whatsapp on the on the smartphone and started talking to each other and we realized that we don't need have to send sms to each other anymore you know uh, it is one mo mobile device can do everything so technology has been something so new that nobody has really thought about large scale coding competitions for school students before coding um, when we started building Codingal, we looked at coding competitions as a way by which we can encourage more students to start learning coding at least. If someone looks at these prizes like 2 lakh, 3 lakh prizes that we give in every competition, and just by looking at the prizes, if someone develops an interest, nothing better than that. By looking at these free mentoring mentorship sessions that we provide in these coding competitions, if students want to get started with coding, nothing better than that. And, and the mission remains, how can we inspire more kids and teens to fall in love with coding? So with that mission, we, and, and competition is very well aligned to that. With that mission, we built a competition platform on the product, on Codingal website, where we can host any number of competitions throughout the year. So in last two years, we have hosted over 100 coding competitions. Uh, this year is the third edition of HP Code Wars that is happening. In HP Code Wars itself, uh, their prize is worth over 2.5 lakh. And I think this is the largest competition in terms of prizes also for you know for school students around coding in India. Um, and uh, we have about 10,000 students who have registered for this already from 25 different countries. Majority of them are from India, from over 900 different cities. So again, a lot of students you know, over the years have come to know about HP Code Wars. Besides this, we have conducted coding competitions for school students with almost every IIT in the country today. Uh, we reached out to these IITs. We said that, hey, uh, we want to you know, in encourage more and more kids to get into STEM, to le start learning coding. And uh, we ran th those competitions where students and winners, they get prizes uh, which are accredited by STEM.org, which have the IIT's logo. Uh, besides, you know, all those goodies and everything, and that works as a great source of motivation for everyone. So that is what we have been doing. And it has been really amazing to see that coding competitions, even though it has been a very new uh, thing for kids and teens in India, uh, everybody is really, really uh, in enthusiastic about it. And there are tens of thousands of students participating in these competitions. Really, this is so unique and encouraging for the kids around and the teens around. Yes. So, Coding Girl has partnered with Hewlett Packard Enterprise to host HP Code Wars 2023. Could you please tell us more about your association with HPE and this 2023 edition? Yes, absolutely. So, uh, this is the third edition that that HP and Code War, Coding Girl are working together to run Code Wars. Um, the objective is the same, run a competition which is free to participate for everyone. Uh, they just have to visit codingle.com, uh, look for the HP Code Wars competition, register in the competition, uh, get a free mentorship session also, prepare for the competition and then you know participate in it. There are two formats of it. One is a hackathon and the second is called as a code battle. battle. Hackathon is where uh, students have to build projects. Uh, around different themes. Uh, one of the theme is sustainability. Uh, one of the themes are around smart cities. Uh, there's a theme around cyber crime. And you have to build applications, websites, projects, uh, which addresses some of these. Like for example, if you build a application which could be used by, let's say, travelers of Mumbai to 
uh, go to different places in Mumbai or know all the places to visit in Mumbai uh, in a very com- easy and convenient way, that could be a great project to work on. Right? Just just sharing an example. So uh, last year also, in the last year's edition, we had seen amazing projects built by school students uh, who own the who went on to own the hackathon also. The quality of many of these projects was even better than uh, college students who graduate from IITs or or some of these colleges. So really amazing projects that that was built in the hackathon. Uh, and there will be you know many winners like top three winners will get goodies and then you know bunch of winners after that. There is another format of the same competition which is code battle, which will run for three hours on April thirtieth. April thirtieth is Sunday from one pm to four pm India time. Uh, there will be a three-hour coding competition where students have to log on to codingal.com website, look for the competition, enter the competition, and you will see a code editor right in the browser itself where you will see a problem on one side and then you have to write the code for that. You submit the code, you get a result in real time, you know, that whether the code is correct or not, you get points for that, there's a live leaderboard, and you see where your rank is on the leaderboard. At the end of the competition, Again, top 10 winners will receive prizes and top three will receive like bigger prizes and then you know, winners after that. It's a very uh, amazing format of competition which runs online, uh, makes it uh, makes the access easy for everyone. Anybody who has a you know, laptop, internet connection, doesn't matter whether you are where you are sitting in the entire country or in the entire world, you can participate in this competition so that you are the best programmer uh, you can use languages like C, C++, Java, and Python to write code and solve these coding problems and, and get on top of the leaderboard. So really amazing format. We have seen uh, incredible participation and responses from students in the last two years also. And the same is expected this year too. Wow, I'm super excited to know what's in store for the code battle, which is happening on the 30th of April. Are there any registration charges to participate and how can I prepare myself better? Yeah, absolutely. So as I mentioned, no registration charges, everything, all the competitions that we do for students are absolutely free, completely free to register, completely free to look at, you know, prepare. And there's a practice arena built for the, for the code battle already. So you can go and start solving the problems. And uh, uh, there's a free mentorship session that all the students can sign up for. One of our coding instructors who are the best in the class, they will give a free mentorship session for one hour and you can book it actually multiple times uh, and, and, and learn how to prepare for the, for the competition. So absolutely free of charge for everybody. Wonderful. Our student viewers must be very eager to know about the prizes. Can you tell us more about what students can expect to win? Yes. So, um, Overall, Code Battle has prizes of about 1.5 lakh rupees, uh, which is distributed across you know, the winners. And then uh, the hackathon uh, format has a prize of about 1 lakh rupees, which is again distributed across winners. Besides that, students get goodies from you know, HP, from, from Codingle, and uh, these are really amazing goodies. So I will probably leave it here for now. Students should de- definitely go to codingle.com, check out the competition, and and look at the prizes themselves. I'm sure the prizes would be a very big motivator to participate in the competition, considering this is the only competition and these competitions which run on Codingle are the only competitions which are absolutely free of charge for anybody to participate. Thank you so much for sharing all the competition details and this was really insightful. We now move to our next segment, my favorite segment, a rapid fire round. I hope you're ready. I think this is scary, but but I'm ready. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Can artificial intelligence replace human intelligence? Great question. Um, with the advances, advancements that have happened, uh, and there's a technical term for it called as large language models. Um, with Chat GPT, which everybody is aware, Open AI APIs, we are already seeing that. Artificial intelligence can make a lot of work much easier and can replace a lot of jobs. A report also came out that AI will replace at least 300 million jobs in the next 10 years. Now, this is scary. 
the jobs which are going to be impacted primarily are a lot of jobs which are very repeated or very manual in nature okay? to make to keep it to make it simpler i know this is a rapid fire round but this is a very important question so i'm explaining in slightly more detail to make it simpler jobs for example which require let's say writing emails the ai will do the job of that okay the jobs which require probably coordination among five different people to figure out a common meeting time the ai will do the job for that in programming in coding and engineering solutions to very simple problems ai will give give the answer for that what what will not change is specifically when it comes to coding and engineering the skill to solve complex problems and the skill to build a full fledged product a full fledged company to build a full fledged feature those things are not going to be replaced at least in the near future who knows like 50 years later uh, uh, can come in but at least not in the foreseeable future um and that's why it's very important to get started with technology at a much younger age even now more important than ever before and specifically coding and programming developing a very strong knowledge of it becoming good at it is going to be really a boon for everybody specifically for kids and teens who are still in school by the time you graduate from college at least a simpler coding or ai will be already doing that by now that that's that's already something we are seeing and that's why it's important to become even better at it starting at a much young age it's a scary if you don't know how to deal with it uh, ai is scary but ai is actually really powerful if you use it as an enabler like for example i have already started writing code using ai systems like github copilot and it allows me to do the same work now at least at 2x faster speed if something was taking me one day to complete now it is taking me 5 hours to complete 6 hours to complete by using ai systems and using it as my help rather than you know by by you know getting scared away by it. so that's a longer answer kar yeah right so what is your best life advice motto or favorite quote um the best life advice is become really good at at least one thing in life really really good and hopefully it is also the passion that you have inside you because when that happens then work doesn't feel like work studying doesn't feel like a study and for me it has been coding and program so true what's your favorite past time my favorite past time changes you know from time to time um these days it has been playing tennis oh that's great if you had not founded coding girl you would have i would be probably right now working on working with probably some of the best ai teams to advance to create advancements in the field of ai that's great do you like playing or watching any sport um yes uh, actually bunch of sports i watch cricket sometimes these days and when it comes to playing play tennis so now for some tongue twisters you have to repeat them five times and quickly the first okay. one is world wide web easy one world, world wide web 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 i think i did it great <laughs> and the last one a difficult one for me uh, upper roller lower roller i'll upper repeat it once again Yes, yeah. upper roller, lower roller. Okay, upper roller, lower roller, upper roller, lower roller, upper roller, lower roller, upper low roller, lower roller, upper low roller, lower roller. Yeah, this was the hard one, definitely. <laughs> this was I, I, super fun, super fun. Yes. To conclude, would you like to share any message to all the students and parents out there? yes definitely everybody who is watching this video or goes on to watch this uh the message that i would like to give is the world is changing at a very fast speed uh when i was in school 
uh, we didn't have access to computer or any exposure to computer science education, coding education in general. And see, uh, 10 years, 15 years later, this is all that I care about because this is the world of technology that we live in. And it's important to embrace at a very young age to provide the right education to our children about technology um, at a very young age. And this is something not to fear about. This is something not to be scared about. The world changes over the time. And as mankind, we have to only adapt to it. We cannot say that, hey, the world is very different now, but I will con still continue to do what I was doing 20 years ago. The, the world doesn't move like that. Um, coding is actually a brain time for, for all the kids and teens. It's not a screen time. Everybody, all, all the students who like coding, they look at it as a medium to improve their logical skills, to improve their cognitive thinking skills, something that they really have a lot of fun with. And I'm sure, Carrie, you have a lot of fun with it. Uh, and it's important for us as parents also to understand that what is, that this is something good for our children and we have to expose them to it in the right manner so that they develop a better interest in technology. AI is a very new technology in front of all of us. All of us are still debating and actually thinking about how much it will change the way we work in the next five to 10 years. And I'm sure the kids and teens who are still in school, by the time they graduate from college, the way we work would have fundamentally changed by then. The pace of technology is something that should never be taken for granted. Just like 10 years ago, nobody could have imagined we would be walking with a computer in our, in our basically in our hand. That's what a phone is. It's a computer in our hand. And, uh, and that's why it's important to be prepared well enough for it, something not to be scared about it, but to actually learn it more, to understand it more, so that we are able to you know, become better by understanding it. So that's the message I would like to give to all the parents and to all the students that get better at learning and understanding of technology. And that starts with developing an interest in computer science and at least having a basic education of coding. Thank you so much. So true. Technology is advancing and we have to keep pace with it. Yes. Sir, it was wonderful catching up with you. I hope you enjoyed our interaction too. Yes, definitely, Karvi. And thanks a lot once again for inviting me here. We now wrap this Kids by TV special bulletin. Don't forget to participate in the Code Battle competition coming up on the 30th of April. I am definitely participating in this competition and I hope you do too. Visit the Codingle website and register now. Thanks for watching Kids by TV. This is Kairavi Chauhan signing off. Thank you.